All right, let's do this. Okay, new products this week. We're gonna kick it off because there was like, you know, we let the world have a week without a feather. No, no, there we was, didn't. There was, Last week we there, had feathers. I believe there was there was one week where there was no feathers. Is that true? No. Really? Yeah. Although you know what, I have to go grab a feather. Okay. In a second. I'll be right back. So one, of, she's gonna go away. Oh wait, here it is. Yeah. Right. Sorry. I thought that there was one week where we did. We, there's been a feather every week. So I think there's been a feather every single week. Wow. I don't believe we've ever had a week without. Last week we had the 8x16 matrices. You're right. And then before then we had the hex. Okay, so this is the GPS feather wing, which was actually a big request. So I'm glad I got this done. And so this is an add-on for any of our feather boards. It actually doesn't work very well with the ESP8266 feather because it uses the same RX and TX pins. So it's like, that's the only one it doesn't work so great with. I have to look to see if you can do um, software serial. But for the Feather 32U4, the Feather M0, um, the Feather Wicked, or the, the Blue Fruits, whatever, you want to add GPS capability, this is a really easy way to add Ultimate GPS, which is my favorite GPS module. It has a built-in antenna, or you can use an external antenna. Um, it has a real-time clock built in, and you can add a coin cell if you would like, and that will give you seven years of you know, battery back time keeping, and also it'll uh, start up fast. And it's just kind of a nice, it's like a compact little GPS. So that's that. Can, um, can you show the next photo? Yeah. You like the little cable leaf? This is the uh, external antenna. So if you're using the Feather GPS in a box, so you want to, um, oh, can you zoom? Is it possible to zoom out a little bit or is it? Want, yeah, I can do whatever. Yeah. Just this a, is, it's all, it's yeah. like that, you want that? Yeah, just because you, you, I wanted to see the, um, the antenna connection stuff. Yeah, so you've got the, uh, the antenna plugs in. You can use an external active antenna, and that way you can put it on the outside of a car or the outside of a box or whatever uh, right. to have an external antenna. But it, if you don't need an external antenna, the internal antenna, the onboard antenna works quite well. Okay, rad. So so you can add it to any, any of the feathers we have. Like it works, would work well with the Fona feather. Yeah. You plug it into the Fona feather, now you've got a cellular tracker. Do you like how I pretended that we didn't have a feather every week, but we did because people are like, no, 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 no. There was a feather every week, Phil. There's been a feather every week. I, I, I think maybe a few months ago, I think during Christmas or something, maybe we, was, we had one week where we didn't. Yeah. But it's been like a, two or three months of every. You, you know what's cool? Every day. Is because we're, we're calling these feathers, um, we can do like bird names for ideas for products. And so I was watching videos of grackles. Grackles. You are have cool. to, if you, after this show, go search on YouTube. And, grackle. And please never look at my YouTube history because you're going to see a bunch of weird stuff, including grackle videos. So there's grackles and they, they, they're black, but then they have all the colors and then they sound like a machine is coming out of them. They sound like a modem sometimes. Yeah. And they're called grackles and you can, and they're so smart. Yeah, they're super smart. Anyways, I want a grackle. Okay, no, no, no you no, do no, not want a grackle. No, I don't want, no, I don't want to possess a, another being like that. What I want is like, a, I want to be a friend. Okay, you to want a, a grackle, grackle pal. I want a grackle friend. Okay. Anyways. Okay, so that's the uh, GPS. You can maybe take a show this photo really fast. Yeah. Anyways, this is the GPS from the top, and yeah, it's just GPS wing. It's lovely. I like it. GPS it up. Yeah. Okay, so we got a little board. Vemmel 67, uh, 6070. This is a true UV uh, light sensor with I squared C. It's actually a pretty simple sensor. It just has um, a UV photodiode and it has the analog digital converter and biasing and everything ready to go. It's just, if you, we have a couple of UV sensing solutions, but the Scilabs one, it's like not true UV. It's like UV indexing and it kind of pretend like it's UV and it's a little annoying. And then we have the, um, the GUVA, the GUVA sensor, which is an analog sensor. This is nice because it's an I squared C sensor. It's very easy to use. It's fairly low cost, um, and it will give you UV light levels. Now, it doesn't give you index. Like, it doesn't give you the UV index. It gives you light level. Um, you can calibrate it against index if you like, but it's just not calibrated. It just gives you, like, a value. Like, more UV light, higher value. OK. Moving right along. Um, we got this really, really, really nice kit. Um, this is one of my favorite ones. Yeah, it's um, a cute and kit. And we have a little video too. Oh, move, move. Yeah, well, that's that's it. Like acting at like high speed. Yeah. So, it's a clock. Yeah, it's a clock. And you know what? I didn't actually read on how to um, how to read the the time. But yeah, it's green o'clock. It's green o'clock, and these change colors based on minutes and time. And I think that 
see that just changed. So I think this is like hour. Yeah. Like first digit, second digit, and then maybe like minutes. I. I don't know. It's 8.39. It's kind of, it's eight, I know it's 8.39, but um, as time passes, these change colors and light up different colors. And it, they look really good. It's like a really beautiful little like art piece. And the um, enclosure is this beautiful um, wood. It's like a very nice yeah. made en enclosure. Uh, it's a, a nice clock kit. It looks really neat. And then like only you know how to tell time. So it's a little bit, it's kind of like a funky engineering clock. And it's called the Fibonacci clock. So... I think this would be good if you want to have like a clock that also looks like art. That could be a good option for you. And it's open source, which I like. So you yeah. can also hack it and build your own and DIY a version. Okay, next up. One of the stars of the show tonight, besides you, Lady Ada, is the Arduino MKR. The maker. Anyone knows who makes this, let us know, because I'm tired of saying I it. I'm, I'm tired of saying it's probably Atmel or... Intel. I'm just tired. It's not of, Intel because they didn't don't make yeah, the chips on here. It's Atmel. It's probably Atmel, but Sorry. it'd be weird. Why don't they say? Because they don't. They you don't know what? The them. electronic biz is weird, folks. It's weird. Do you want to go to the overhead? And I'll show yeah. off what's in here. So this is a nice photo on a black background. It is then, a very nice. And then this is it live. Okay, so this is. Do you want me to zoom yeah, in? Yeah, can you zoom in? So this is the Maker 1000, which is it looks a little bit like a feather, but it's it's different. It's got some different circuitry on it. Um, it does have a light poly charger here. Um, so this is a light poly battery, and this is a micro USB. Inside of here is basically an M0 and at SAMD 21D, uh, at SAMD 21G18 plus a Wink 1500 Wi-Fi module. So it's all basically in one like skinny board. So it's kind of cool. There's four mounting holes, which I like, and it has all of the pins broken out on the back. It has like a really nice diagram of all what the pins are so it's kind of like really nice looking it says Arduino maker and then this is two mounting holes but 1000 um, open source and it's from arduino.cc and then here's a bunch of switch it's basically a lot of um, uh, analog circuitry to allow it to also use this as USB host and also switch between um, and maybe it does boosting between the battery and USB so you can run a USB device off of, there's a reset button. There is on LED and charge LED and a pin 13 LED. So that's kind of nice. And it's basically ready to go. It doesn't even come with headers. So it's, it's perfect for like IoT projects because that's built in Wi Fi. It's very um, cost effective. Like you get a lot for your money. It can do SSL. It can do uh, soft AP. So you can have this act like an access point. It can act like a client or host. Uh, they're, you know, you can uh, um, put SSL certificates inside. So if you want to have it, cert you know, certify the uh, root certificate of who you're connecting to, it can do that. So yeah, overall, like a, a really nice embedded, low power capable Arduino. So it's like all the joy of Arduino, but like low power and, yeah. and pretty low cost. All right. It's all moving towards little internet connected devices. I know, IoT is where it is at. Yes, okay, so speaking of um, hot products. I'm gonna keep this one for myself. Yeah, um, we're selling a small city. No, um, we have a little heat sink. And it uh, fits on top of a pie. Yeah, this is, um, I, I am morally against saying that you need a heat sink for most pies, but for the Pi 3, it actually is a pretty uh, handy thing. If you're going to be using it um, and I think, yeah, it's a Pi 3. If you're going to be using it at very um, high power needs, like you're going to be running it very, very fast for a very long time, um, it's, it is kind of nice to have a heat sink. It will help for over, for the, because if you don't have a heat sink, it will eventually start uh, clocking down to yeah. keep the core temperature low. Like you'll never damage it from overuse because it will automatically s slow the speed down, just like your computer does. When it, um, you use it too much, it will s slowly get. Uh, slower and slower so that the core temperature doesn't um, get too high. And so um, I did a whole video, and you can watch it, about you can monitor the temperature and also what the core speed is. But if you would like, you can um, make it, you know, you don't have to even have an active fan. By adding this, you can basically run it 20% faster uh, when you're clocking all the cores at once, all four of them. Um, having this heat sink will get, having this heat sink will give you an extra 20%. So I think it was like 1.2 gigahertz instead of one gigahertz, basically. Uh, just unstick this, you unpeel this, 
stick it on. And what's nice is it still fits in our case with that heat sink on. So if you were like, oh, I, I only want to get this, if I can put it in a case still, it'll still fit in a case. I just have to snap this. Did I not insert it right? No, I'm just, I can't snap. But yeah, like it's loose, so I didn't tape it down. But yeah, you can have the heat sink in there and you know, you'll have a little bit of airflow. If you get a fan, of course, that works great too, but a fan's a little bit more annoying and you have to get a small one and power it. This is just pop it on and you're ready to go. Okay. It's a little towel, but that's what you need. Okay, and of course, um, we went over this before, but we'll say it again. The Pi Zero, like 1.3. Is out? 1.3 is 1 the Pi 1.3 is out. Yeah. So um, if you had a Pi Zero or you were waiting for one because they're constantly out of stock, um, you know, no one's ever said that to us. Yeah, Wait, why never. are they? They're like, Ew. I know. I wish people yeah. would like tell us more that I, the Pi's out of stock. If and they I would, only knew from we could have done internet something. comments. Yeah. So anyways. Like, I wish somebody would tweet we, and then maybe message and then maybe they could also leave a forum and then they could also send an email and then yeah. they could call and tell us <laughs> that they sent an email. Yeah. So um, anyways, the Pi Zero is a $5 Raspberry Pi, so that's why they're in high demand and they sell out really fast. We have some packs, we have some standalone units. But the major difference between this one and the previous one, 1.2, is as a camera connector. So Yes, so this is the camera connection. Yeah. There is a, basically a little slot over here. And if you open these two little nubs, which get my fingernails in there, you can slot this camera connector out. This is a flex connector. This side connects right into the camera. You can use the Noir camera, five megapixel or eight megapixel, and then um, match it up. You don't need to use it, but they just add the connector on there for you. They moved a couple components over to make space. That's lovely of them. Thank you so much. So hold on, there you go. And then push this in to sock it into place. And um, other than that, nothing's really changed. Got micro uh, USB on the go for USB client or host. Micro USB for power. That Pi 1 uh, processor, single core processor, 700 megahertz-ish. Mini HDMI, so you need an HDMI adapter. Micro SD socket, all the GPIO pins, but doesn't come with any header. So if you want to plug in a Pi hat, you'll have to solder in that component, or you can just free wire it. Um, nothing on the bottom. You can uh -huh. get TV out over here if you want. No audio, so that is something just to be aware of if you are uh, looking for yeah. audio. You can get audio, digital audio out of the HDMI, but if you want um, analog audio, you either have to wire up a resistor capacitor thing going on here or use an I2S amplifier. So yeah, we'll do some projects maybe with this and the camera. Maybe we'll do some sort of video, yeah. video cam so, project. You know, in case you're wondering, like, I don't, Here's the way I look at it, and I'm not Lady Ada, so I'm, you know, I'm like the third one over that can kind of use a tool and a fire once in a while. Okay. But it seems to me like, you know, the Pi 3 in particular is extremely powerful. You can do computer science stuff on you. You can you're, really, you're, you're you learning can do like code YouTube. On it. Yeah. You're doing, you're watching YouTube. You're, it is a low cost computer for the masses mm -hmm. to teach and inspire and more. And then a Pi Zero is, it's a project Pi for kind of specific stuff like a camera project. You're, you're able to do a lot of DIY projects that need a little tiny Linux computer to do some stuff. Yeah, we did the Pi Girl Zero. Yeah. Which is funny because if you played with the Pi Girl 2, like going back from Pi Girl 2 back to yeah. like Pi Zero, it's like, oh wow, that processor was pretty slow. You can kind of play games, but it's yeah, not it's very right fast. On the edge. It's on the edge. And so it's just interesting like where all these things are, are getting used and what we're seeing is a lot of people are learning how to program on like a Pi 3, and then they're doing the projects mm -hmm. with something like a Pi Make, Zero. Maker projects are really yeah. good to do with a Pi Zero. So anyways, um, that's, that's where I see it going. Yep, okay. and we're- We have some packs. We are shipping, out. we have some, we had some packs, I think we're out of stock. Yeah, we're out of stock on all this stuff. We, we are putting um, more Pi Zeros in every week. Yeah. Uh, we did not put in all of them at once because our shipping team would not have been able to handle all of the orders, because they would sell out. So we, we have to put in, a couple hundred at a time. Yeah. So uh, sign up. We will notify people. There's websites that will notify you. Uh, it's first come, first serve. Max one per customer. We're doing everything we can to avoid people yeah. snagging them and then scalping them. Uh, yeah. Please only pick them up if you're going to do something with it. Don't 
don't don't grab it just for the sake. I mean, if you want to have it for the sake yeah. of having it, but but let people who are going to use it for projects. Yeah, and I guess I'll them. I'll just make a request. Um, when you send an email and you're you're mean or you say terrible things because they sold out, like it actually goes to a human, and so like be nice. Um, if they get too many, we may stop carrying it. Yeah. I mean, like I, it's no, it's just like it's one of those things. Like every email is read by a person at the Adafruit team, and um, a lot of the folks at Adafruit are a lot like Adafruit, uh, Lamore and myself, and we we like being good to each other. So you know, and if you know someone who, um, it's kind of like the best analogy I can think of. Have you ever like had not really a friend but an acquaintance, and you were maybe at a restaurant or maybe you've worked at a restaurant, and um, they're nice to you, but they're terrible to the, the waiter or waitress. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, all of a sudden, you're just like, how can you be such a jerk, but you're like being nice to me? This is, they're just trying to do their job. Yeah. It's, it's like that. Like, if they're out of the fish, it's not the it, waiter or waitress's it's, fault. It's, it's, it's like that. Being, being mean to someone who's just doing their job ain't so cool. So, anyways, that's just a little pro tip. Hate the fish, not the fisher. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, Lady Ada, guess what? That was new products. Yay! We got through everything. Yeah, you got through new products.